And here we are in the second part. That will make for a great transition. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Togepi. Oh, where? You just run past it. There it is. And it's gone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they do run away very quickly because they get scared very easily because they're babbies. They are babbies. Well, we're starting off this part not with as much... I thought that was a fucking Snorlax for a second. No, there are no Snorlax in this particular region, to my understanding. You are going to want to catch a Combi from this area, though. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think you're a bit too far. Oh, is that why that's happening? I think you need enough force for it. Like, you've disturbed it now, so it's on edge, but... Like, I think you do need to at least be able to get a bit of force when you catch it. And some floats off. <laughs> Ooh, that uh, rounded out my thing as well. Nice. And then obviously you want to make sure that you uh, can catch an Apom from Apom Hill. Hell yeah. I thought I was an item then until he stood up. <laughs> It looked like the poles are like crystal stuff that you're getting on the other areas. Well, whatever, he's gone. There's no time for regrets. Only throwing balls. There's enough ape on here that it's not going to be a problem. They are very tiny. Oh, hey. One second. Wrong ball. You were trying to catch that pseudo widow in the distance, weren't you, Tom? <laughs> yes, I was. Yeah, funny. You're always where I'm going, Volo. So-so, uh, I guess. Yeah, it's alright. It's happening. Restraining all just haven't been invented yet. I haven't found that plight. <laughs> Dude literally fist fighting with almighty god. I can see it. Ten Pokemon that are said to have followed the ancient hero. Interesting. There's one part of the story that I did know about, so... Basically it is that uh, those are the like, Weird Ear, um, Cleavor, Liliant, Arcanine... Legion. You can stop there. Well, either way, that's all we've met so far, so anything else would technically be a spoiler, wouldn't it? That's why I asked you to stop, though. <laughs> I hope we run into an ape on that, because... Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any around here. Not a single Apom. You fucking get the... <laughs> Go and defeat one so you get a like, thing for that in your Pokédex rather than just catching like a hundred. <laughs> no. I'm going to sulk now. You're going to sulk by progressing the plot. I am. Yeah, this is Iskan, and hopefully you can see now why, in a way, Iskan and Polina together, theoretically, could be uh, Nessa's ancestors. Yeah, I get you. That one is sort of obviously beginning to stretch it a little bit. Yeah, I think a lot of these ones are, because like, the ones that are clearly ancestors they're so obvious you can't miss it so the ones that you have to stretch it a bit that's where i think like no that's probably not intentional part of me kind of wishes that i mean in a way it might still be somewhat intentional i might just thought well we'll make this close enough that people might think it but we're not making it 
definitive, it just sort of that, let's leave the ambiguity there as to whether it is a possibility or not. Yeah, because it is ultimately more fan service than anything really important. So, like, I could see that maybe, but, you know. Also, Iskan really does not like Dusclops. Oh, I see why you were talking about Dusclops now. Basically, we need Dusclops to make Basque Legion's favourite food in order to get him to join our team. Nice. And obviously, that's not join our team, join our team team. It's uh, to let us ride him. I appreciate that it followed on from uh, the Let's Go games and having, like, ride Pokemon act as HMs and whatnot. Oh, without a doubt. I think that was one of the, the best moves that the franchise has ever made, really, because HMs um, were just becoming such a waste of time. Some of the workarounds work better than others, so I will say. Like, in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, where it was just like an app on the watch that calls a Bidoof, then it, like, that felt a little bit soulless. But, like, you know, when it's the ride Pokemon in Alola, like you mentioned there, it's, that makes a bit more sense. It's tied in and whatnot. <laughs> Don't bring it out, for the love of God. You know, if we weren't already rocking a ghost-type Pokemon with Typhlosion, I would like a Dust Noir, because he's one of my favourite ghost-types. I think my favourite ghost-type is still good old Gengar. He's pretty solid. No, he's not. He's a ghost. Ha 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 ha! The first part was such a cracker, this one has just been pure shit from beginning to end. <laughs> <laughs> well, like we said in the last part, we can get one good one out of the sesh. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, okay, can you get a grip, please? I like how Dustlop's turn to, like, judge him. <laughs> oh dear, I blew up the entire camp. Oops, crap. Silly me. Hoo hoo, tilly dee. Ball of Basculegion food. Very nice. Ooh, new ride Pokemon. But first, what else is around here? There we go, let's actually fight the lad. Don't think you can technically get right now. To, well, no, actually, no. I think you can. It just depends where you run um, in the area to, to a special little hidden coast, um, which gives you some uh, some special Pokemon. But you'd have to get your map up to figure out exactly how you get there. Okay, I'm listening. Okay, so it's Hideaway Bay. So basically, you just want to go down to sort of the next level down and then sort of run to your right. Yeah, it's all work back on yourself a bit. And rather going through over that nook you want to go keep going to your right. So head towards the furthest mountain in front of you. And then left through there. You've tricked me. <laughs> I have not tricked you. That is just where uh, Alpha Ampicom decides to live. Well, I mean, it makes sense with all the A-bombs on the lead up. This is also, I, I believe, a um, good location for... I want to say... Peppini, Chansey and Blissey to turn up. Right, yeah, the uh, EXP grind Pokémon, as it were. Yes, although obviously they're not really working the same in that sense, um, this game. Um, there is a place where there is an Alpha Blissey, which is also where they turn up quite regularly. Um, but this is a, a potential location, I, I think. Oh, he's gonna die. Better fucking die, I swear to Christ. Maybe sing to Typhlosion out so he can't do that. Ah, good idea. Well, it's gonna be now or never. Just increasing my uh, 
collection of alphas over here. That was easier than it could have been. Good stuff. Now just to revive the Luxray in case we find another one. <laughs> yeah, that'll be a good idea, mate. I don't have many revives, I better use them sparingly. <laughs> The music is funky in this area, Jesus. Oh yeah, it is. Also, the instrumentation here sounds a bit more Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl than the rest of the game does. And when it's used sparingly like here, that's fine. I'm kind of mixed on the Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl soundtrack because some of the arrangements do work and especially like the post-game areas, they sound really cool with the new sound direction. Some of it is a little bit Tame a little bit safe. It's always one of those things of uh, sometimes when you remaster a soundtrack, it works, and just like, oh my god, this is like the best thing ever, and other times it's like, no, it's Fuck. missing a certain something. Oh, Hippini, Hippini, Hippini. Where? Um, see the flowers? Yeah. On the beach. Just go forward a little bit there. There you go. But yeah, basically what I was getting at is that when they're composing music specifically with the MIDI instrumentation in mind, there's certain things that work there that if you use... Not necessarily real instruments, because the Brilliant Diamond Shining Pole music isn't real instruments, but if you use more detailed instruments, it can sort of accidentally make the arrangement feel a bit busy when it naturally isn't. Yeah. I feel like it restrained that for the most part, but every now and then there's something that it just doesn't click, and it's kind of hard to put my finger on why. And it's also weird because when we got the remixes for Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, I think they turned out a lot better. And a lot of that comes down to the choice of instrumentation there. It felt more like it was trying to do its own thing. And like, granted that makes sense because the GBA instrumentation was so much more limited. So they kind of had to deviate a lot more. Yeah. But I just feel like that worked. It felt almost like those songs would fit perfectly alongside the X and Y soundtrack. Whereas the Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl soundtrack, it's just, it, it feels in a way, it feels a bit plain in the same way that the visuals feel a bit plain. It's there, it ticks the box, but it's nothing special. Yeah, I, I get what you mean. Music's just weird when you think about sort of like, there's just the tiniest little changes to like even an instrument can really fundamentally change how a song lands. Really. And I feel also a lot of the music direction from the original Diamond and Pearl, just the Sinnoh soundtracks in general compared to other mainline Pokemon games, they're a lot more subtle in their direction. And I think that's why the remixes in this game and Legends Arceus work so well, because like when when we were going into the woods where Cleavor is and you just get that little bit of the piano from Eterna Forest kicking in, that's just subtle enough to be a neat little detail from the original track without proper ha properly hammering in a riff. And when you try and make that with the more electronic instrumentation of Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, it, it just doesn't have that same effect. Yeah. I must capture all the round lads. Mm, it's fair. It's fields. Love them. Celio, I could take or leave. Ditto. No, I don't think Ditto's in this game, actually. Uh, unfortunately not, no. It, 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 it. Life is ruined. Well, I mean, we don't have a breathing mechanic, so we don't need our flexible slot Pokemon. Ah, yes. I wonder if uh, Togepi is back. Uh, debatable. But worth a punt. This was the area, right? No, it was behind where you were. It was just as you ran over this that it spawned in. 
You sure? This doesn't look like the area. I'm pretty sure it was that little patch of grass where it spawned that you just ran past. Seemed more open to me. Uh, no, I think it, it, it was this area that it, it was in. It was um, just over by the star. And oh, there it is! Oh, there we go. There's one. Ah! You fucker! <laughs> maybe leave that for another day. Maybe, maybe. Man, Toga Kiss really saved that line, didn't it? <laughs> really? And especially now it's fairy type as well. It went from being a kind of awkward to get Pokemon that doesn't really get much use into actually a genuinely fantastic team member. I mean, they've been doing that a lot for quite a few Pokemon as of late, of um, giving them a chance that they, uh, they they never had before of being useful. Well, letting you get them earlier in games is a big part of that. Like, for all the shit that I've been given Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, the Grand Underground letting you get Pokemon that usually wouldn't appear until late game, that really does change the dynamics that you, like your team composition. I guess all these guys use the same flute. Same flute, same tune. Laziness. Zero out of ten, too much flute. This would be a very different cutscene if Ursaluna just jumped into the water and drowned. God. <laughs> Hell yeah. What a glow up for this line. Great design. Well, I mean, Basculin is functionally useless without it, so yeah. <laughs> you want me to ride that thing? Okay, I guess. When in the past, as said by God himself. That would literally be me, my worst nightmare. Um, but... Hey, we're here! Indeed he so. Actually, no, tell a lie. My worst nightmare would be having to ride a giant frog. Um, but this would be a very close second. Really? That doesn't seem too bad. Frogs are cool. I ha I, I have a fear of frogs. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I don't know where he was keeping that, but I will accept it. <laughs> he probably swallowed it in all honesty. <laughs> it just dawned on me that these two are from opposing factions. That's why they can't be seen together. Yep. Could be a little callback or call forward to like the Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire post game where you see the Team Magma and Team Aqua people living together. I mean, also part of it goes into the whole why are we fighting when actually we're both after the same things in life and it, it's part of the overall discussion um, that takes place between um, the Diamond Clans and the Pearl Clans as the game progresses. Um, it's probably one of the only times where you've had two opposing forces actively have that conversation of why are we fighting in a Pokemon game because most of the time it yeah it's just like a pure after the game situation and uh, even then just in a sort of side thing or in sort of like special extra villain stuff I think the only time I can think about it is like um, the the rainbow rocket arc where all the villains obviously decide to join forces Yeah, that was kind of unusual. I, I think it's a bit sh bit of a shame that they seem to have dropped the whole multiverse idea that they had going on around that time. Because like, we don't really see much acknowledgement of it in any of the Gen 8 games. Maybe they'll bring it back, you never know. They might have thought, let's just sort of pull, pull away from that for a second until we've, you know, got figured out how the hell we're doing this. And then obviously Sword and Shield got lambasted by the fan base. Um, and then it was just like, okay, so now we've got to 
now I've got to find a different route and then once they've settled back in a little bit then they might return to the idea of multiverses. Well I think the multiverse thing was more of an Amori thing so I don't know whether it comes down to how much involvement he has in the given game. Did Gengar teleport them away? What happened there? Yes. Yeah, they kidnapped one of the Growlithe. Now, that part I got, I was just wondering how they exited scene left. Well, I mean, that's the thing that you get with these characters a lot. They just sort of smoke their way out if they don't explicitly have a cover. I will. I will save Puffatron. And evolve him into Doggo Knight. I'm glad we don't let you name the Pokemon, I've got to be honest with you. <laughs> you want to see, know something, or see something really disconcerting? Go on. Look at that person in the background. Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> He's just watching. He just fucking wears Wally. Oh, there they are. Is the reporter who's noting down that he's seen these two together. <laughs> oh, I see. Ooh, the residents of Juba Life are going to be talking about this one for years. It's literally all they have to talk about. You've seen this tiny little village. <laughs> Can I get on my giant monster fish now, please? Nearly. They've just got to finish chatting and then we'll be able to get on it. But yeah, this is going to be one of the coolest things um, that you're able to do, is when you're on Basque Legion, you can actually throw your Pokeballs. Fuck yeah, buddy. So you can both battle on the water and uh, catch on the water. Okay, now is this automatic? It usually, once you've gotten deep enough, um, it'll come up with the ability to just press plus and do it. Also, if you are riding like Weird Ear or another ride Pokemon, usually as soon as you enter the water, it automatically switches to Basculegion, which is good. But Nice. That was cool. <laughs> you caught one of the most useless baby Pokemon. <laughs> Yeah, Mantike's not, not that useful, but obviously Mantine are hiding out about here. You've got the Remoraids. Um, you can find um, near Sands Reach um, some Gyaradoses. Oh, that's adorable. I know, it's amazing. I was thinking, like, how are they going to do this? Because, like, obviously in the regular games, you don't necessarily think, oh, I'm on water here when I'm fighting. Whereas here, it's very clear, so it's nice that they thought, we need to find a way of making it make sense that uh, you've got Pokemon that can only stand on the land out here in battle. Remorage using Charge Beam doesn't seem safe. Like, that must have just shocked the entire ecosystem here to death. <laughs> Look at them go. This water seems fine now, like we're on the ocean and whatnot. There's your new quillfish. Yeah. That was a bad idea. Should have sent a fairy up. Yeah, it's poison to it. I think it's dark poison now, so. Yes, I think you're right. So the water type is just sort of in. It's implied more than actually there. Nice. Like, if it could have a third typing, it'd be water, but it can't. So it won't. Sort of like Lugia in that respect, really, isn't it? But. Oh. Nice shot. It's okay, I bought it. <laughs> Look at him just sort of floating there. That's amazing. That attention to detail would not have existed in previous games. <laughs> exactly. I mean, remember in Gen 6 where we still had like open areas but they dropped down and a circle appeared? Yeah. 
There's that and also the complete disconnect when they did try to make the battle arenas look like the place where it was and then you had Pokemon using Dig on a drawbridge. Yeah. That'd be up this motherfucker. I'm scared. Nice. What's all this then? Got him. Nice shots. I gotta say, I've uh, been having a good run, uh, this sesh. Yeah, it's been going very well. It is the when, like, when you get to a new area, I think is the highlight of this game, because that's when it's like, there's so much new stuff I can do, and it, I'm kind of spoiled for choice. When I've been playing this for myself, those have always consistently been the most exciting parts of the game. Without a doubt. There's Mantine or Gyarados, a bit useless. It's like if you want a war of flying Pokemon, you're not going to use Mantine. You bastard. <laughs> I will get you. It can be kind of fiddly flaming water, to be fair. Mainly because that basculation is so slippery. Okay, I'm just going to back off a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would. Fuck me. God, it feels like the game has just, like, become whole right now by my ability to travel on the water. Yeah, well, you've still got another ride Pokemon left to unlock yet, too. I know, I know. You poor fucker. He did his part, he paralysed it. Don't worry, I'll bring it back out once we're uh, done with fucko over here. There we go. Goodbye. Now we have no more distractions. Thankfully, it's AI seems kind of dumb. Well, that's man time for you, I guess. Yeah, let's keep healing myself even though I'm completely full. <laughs> Hell yeah. Works for me. Please, by all means, keep doing this. <laughs> well, I mean, you're going to have to hit him eventually. I suppose this will let him waste all his roost PP before you actually start hurting him. Oh, you silly sod. <laughs> Just a face full of water. Fingers crossed, this'll be it. Nice. Good shit. I think you're still being chased by something. It's fine, don't worry about it. Uh... Just keep powering up Curlia until we get that bloody Dawnstone. <laughs> yeah. Nope. That's the one. There we go. Lovely job, boy. Alright, we've had our fun here. We like to have a bit of fun here at HFC, but now it's time to actually play the bloody game. Yes. So, uh, head to Firespit Island. It's like I'm playing the Isle of Armour. Uh, a little bit.
it does start to add up when you see that those DLC packs were in a way a precursor for this. So it was taking some children, stretching it as close to this as it reasonably could. Right. Like, maybe there should have been more of that wild area kind of mentality in the main game, but like you can kind of see the evolution of that through the DLC into this gameplay style, at least. Don't worry. I've got a bevy of Pokemon at my side here. I will help. Go on, go for a swim. No, I'm good. <laughs> He was just kind of chilling, though. Okay, well, you can come with us, I guess. Yeah, we've got some more lads around the corner, eh? Fuck yeah, buddy. He may look stupid, but he's Gen 1, so he has a place in my heart. Oh, all the time. Hell yeah. Booba. Yes. <laughs> That's all I have to add. <laughs> Nah, I'm good. Oh, hey. Did he just rub a band towards you? I think he did. He he fucking flash stepped towards me. And that's what you guess. Motherfucker sound like Charizard. Oh hey, how'd you get behind me? I think that just spawned in where the Graveler was. Uh, I've caught one, I've fought one. I'm good. And, I mean, as long as you pick up that Wisp, I'll be happy. Thankfully, he disappears when I pick up stuff. I will get the Wisps in my own time, thank you very much. Okay, which Pokemon will let us swim across lava? Oh my god. None of them. Really? Not even... Not even Ursa Luna? None of them. I feel like that Graveler is going to wake up with a bit of a headache. Yeah, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh sweet Jesus. Why did I volunteer to come here? That was a bit lazy on my part, but whatever. Yeah, I was going to say, you can't just pick them ones up. Um, so no, you're going to have to... No, actually, kick on, try it. See how it works out. Cool. It did actually work. Well, that was less exciting than it could have been. I'm not going to fall into lava flame, Jesus. <laughs> you will with enough encouragement. Ah, I see you over there. Let's just check to make sure all my Pokemon are good. Good. Right. I'll get ready to face a Gengar. Uh, let's see. Yep, that'll do it. Yep, Typhlosion or Rhydon. You need a Firestone for this, I'm pretty sure, unless they changed it for the uh, Hesuian version. So yes, you do need a Firestone, um, but there's a specific thing with uh, a specific growth, which is what they're trying to get to happen here, of um, it's meant to be the son of the Lord of the Isle um, will evolve when he comes to this place. Ah, okay. Um, so they kidnapped what they thought was the sun. Oh. Well, this still works. In fact, this works doubly so, yeah. <laughs> Why would you bring out a fucking Abomasaur in this area? Mate, this is fucking Team Rocket Trio. I don't think they really thought their plan through. No. Also, to be fair to her, I don't think she necessarily wanted to come to this place. 
Why would anyone want to go to an active volcano that wasn't like a scientist? You were the one who threw him out. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, maybe it's uh, time to let Rhydon have a little fun. Actually, Curlia would probably be a bad pick there. True. Double weak to Psychic. Very true. God, you need some battle experience. Yeah. And it's at this moment of time that we realise that Curlia has no psychic moves. Also, it's part fairy, so there is that. Thanks, Flem. I didn't realise it was going to get a hit in straight away. Well, whatever. To be fair, that is the thing that I did find with the, um... Well, when I, when I did get a guard of one, I was thinking, I'll use a guard of one. It's like, no, this thing is way too slow to do well in this game. What the fuck is a moon calf? Is that like a new Pokemon? Technically it should be, because uh, that's referring to a creature that doesn't exist in this world. Yeah, it's like the Indian elephant fiasco all over again. Although they did wreck on that to be Copper Origin now, so it's fine. True. And uh, Charm explicitly says she came from Kanto, so there you go. I think that's where they, the people are kind of going that it, she is both Bertha and Agatha's ancestor because um, obviously she comes from Kanto but also has a lot of Bertha in her but also her two aces are a Rhydon, i.e. Bertha, and a Gengar, i.e. Agatha. Like poetry arrives. Jesus. Then again, Gengar is pretty fast, so I'm not surprised. And let's hope that Typhlosion can get an attack in on that before that gets an attack on on him. <laughs> no worries, Bo. Has Typhlosion got enough levels to have Infernal Parade yet? Might be worth having a look. Because that would definitely be a much better move than Hex in the grand scheme of things. No uh, word of a new move learned or anything yet. No, but that might have been a while ago and I just wasn't paying attention. Because remember, the small one was the sun. Mm hmm. Guys, maybe we should, like, have this discussion away from, like, all this magma and whatnot. Technically, we should be bursting into flames being this close. But, like, if the Growlithe wanted to come over here, then you got to follow it. Oh, don't hold on that shot. No! That's not the one. That's the most cinematic volcano I've ever seen. Oh, fuck yes. And I think this is one of the only times that an evolution has actually taken place in a cutscene. Fucking raw. Yeah. Now it kind of looks like uh, the prototype Arcanoid. I think I do still prefer the Kanto Arcanine design on the whole, but this one's grown on me a lot more since I originally saw it. My literal only gripe with it is its colour palette. I think if it was the same colour palette as regular Arcanine but with this design, 
I would have been perfectly happy. Yeah, I suppose they are trying to make it distinct from the other one, though, to be fair. And it looks cool as fuck here, too. <laughs> I'm no longer baby. Crave power. Amazing. I don't think he's going to listen to you anymore. Jesus, <laughs> very intimidating. And that was a random, Arceus fucking plan there. Either that or he just decided to be a dick. <laughs> God works in mysterious ways. See ya. Yes, let the little boy handle things here. It's okay, we're like five meters away. <laughs> yeah, if he wanted to just run down the hill, he could. I'm still over here, just kind of enjoying this newfound godlike power. In fairness, it doesn't look like he's actually a threat right now, he's just chilling. <laughs> Not just because I'm glowing doesn't mean I'm radioactive. Also, why are you with this guy over here? I don't like you hanging out with that sort. These diamond sorts. It's like the Romeo and Juliet of Hisui. Yes, unfortunately neither of them die. Christ! <laughs> Wait, do you say fortunately or unfortunately? Because I heard unfortunately. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, Richie's just out for blood. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you heard exactly what you heard, um, but still. <laughs> well, you're an English major, you like the tragedies and wonder. Although, to be fair, Romeo and Juliet, not one of my favourites. Fair enough, mate. Just because I think I look at it and just go, that is not romantic in the slightest. Also because, you know, Romeo is 18 and Juliet is 13. It's one of them ones that I feel like the cultural osmosis has got it completely wrong and that kind of takes away from it as well. Yeah. I mean, obviously it is intended to have its elements of romance, but the importance is the tragedy of the relationship and its inability to continue and last um, more so than it being... The pinnacle of romance. Indeed. Now, a little tip someone gave me to save time later on is to make sure you have uh, in the Pokemon menu, the Pokemon you are, like, wanting to send out, then switch back to the barbs. So you can just press X and instantly throw out the Pokemon you need. Yeah, because you do get a very tight window when you get the opportunity to throw a Pokemon out. And this boss in particular, it's a bit of a difficulty spike over the last two. Because while it might look like quite a simple approach, you got to remember, we are surrounded by a magma this time. We are? Oh, Jesus. So you have very little space to move around and he dashes. Look at that extreme speed. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I've got his number. This is phase one, yeah. <laughs> he, will, he will start doing more shit like this. So you want to keep attacking him. You might have missed your chance to avoid it. Or you might not have done. Oh, yep, yeah, Pokemon. Nice. So yeah, basically when he does that move, you want to keep pelting him, otherwise you will get hit by those uh, those balls. The biggest challenge is when you get down to like the final phase, because he is going to limit your where, where you can move. Very much so. 
Alright, here you go, get some free ones in. He's getting ready, yep. Oh, jeez. Oof. You have got to abuse their my frames a little bit when he dashes right at you like that. And uh, here we go, you now can't get out of this particular little area. Bro, I'm over here. Yeah, but once he's over there, you can't really hit him. Ouch. Everyone gets one. Which is why you've got two. Yes, indeed. <laughs> oh. Yeah. This is the challenge. Is that he doesn't... It's like, I can't get to you, you little bugger. Alright, now you can. But by that point, it's pretty much too late. So, uh... Oh, shit. Yep, there's your first death. But it's all right because uh, you have options of what you can do. You can either restart the battle from the beginning if you're a crazy person, or you can admit defeat if you're a crazy person, or you can continue the battle. And uh, basically, yeah, you get to carry over a bunch of the progress that you've made in depleting uh, the bar, or you can reset the gauge. Um, I basically was just like. Of course, I'm going to keep the bloody progress. What do you take me for? I've gotten that far. Yeah, I, I kind of got into a thing there where it was like he cornered me. Uh, I will say, whenever I've done that, I've just restarted it because it, it's one of the things to me where it just doesn't feel right to just get an out like this. But yeah, like, I can kind of see why they wouldn't want to gate this off, given it's such a radical change in gameplay style that, you know, it. It's the sort of thing that a typical Pokemon player wouldn't necessarily be prepared for. No, and also, I would say this fight more than any of them, because it limits where you can go so much, um, it's so easy to get screwed over in this fight, more than any of the others, actually. That was rude. It was very rude, but thankfully you got far enough that it was alright. Well, you got to see what Black It Out looks like, guys. Yep, we showed that off intentionally. Ah, yeah. Mm. Bork, bork. I am free. Now, he's a friendly doggo. I know you can evolve. <laughs> <laughs> I do kind of see what you mean about the coloration, but uh, it's trying to replicate the uh, the stone lion doggos that you see in mythology and whatnot. Oh yeah, like, it's not bad, I think it's just, yeah, I just prefer the regular Arcanine colouring. I'll see what you mean, like, the Growlithe kind of has the original colouring, doesn't it? So... I, I suppose it also does complement like the area that he appears in here, though. You know, having the darker, ashy grey sort of thing going on. Oh, poetry. Please stop showing the volcano animation. <laughs> no. People worked hard on that. How dare you criticise it? You haven't made a game. How fuck out the... <laughs> <laughs> I've made dumb shitpost games before. That counts, right? <laughs> yes, that's fine. Don't want to have power, want to be baby. Him <laughs> meanwhile his brother's like, what about me? I was the bigger one. I was borderline alpha over here. I know, just be like just wait until I evolve. Yeah, all well, about that. This is bullshit. He evolves into Kanto Arcanine. Still good, but kind of like the runner up. He 
It sounded almost like that dust clops outside your tent. Really? What's that white hand on your shoulder? I've given him a fucking heart attack, wouldn't it? <laughs> If we stay here a minute longer, we will combust. Well, to be fair, your ace is an ice type, so... Yeah, there, there was no way in hell it was going to do very well here, but... I mean, like, she still did, uh... She came here, just like, yes, let's make the bombs. She showed up. <laughs> What about the bombs? I mean, you know, we would have explained it and done that ourselves, but um, still, it's important that she came and made her mark in attempting to have some leadership with it. Fine, Rick, you don't have to cover for her. I mean, yeah, no. Well, obviously I don't have to cover for her. She's a video game character. She doesn't exist. Or does she? What's that white hand on your shoulder? Is it Iridus? <laughs> it is fucking warm. Well, I guess it's time to uh, GTFO this place. Oh, Jesus Christ. Here is a fucking huge area you start to realise when you have to zoom the map across like that. Yeah, you're just like, bloody hell. Alright, let's uh, cash up. Please be enough. I think that will be enough. Got some good cash. Hopefully we can uh, do some of the uh, requests when we get back. I'm sure we will be able to. Yeah, there no, we've we've done it. <laughs> yeah. That's what I like to see. Hell yeah, let's go.